Good afternoon, I'm Mr. H. Thank you for joining me for this video. We are doing something beneficial here. We haven't looked at the power series development for the hyperbolic cosine, but we will, the standard series for this function here, we will look at the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence which applies to hyperbolic cosine. Perhaps the most easy way of doing this is if you know the series for this. And we've looked at this in two separate videos. We know it is x plus x cube over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial plus x to the 7 over 7 factorial on and on. And we know in contrast to the sine and the cosine series you always have positives here with the hyperbolics for the hyperbolic sine and the hyperbolic cosine. If you do the derivative of this and the derivative of that entire expression you will develop the series for hyperbolic cosine. This here will become a 1 you would be looking at the derivatives here of the variables. All of these factorials could be pushed out as a coefficient. You know you'd be looking at something like d or dx, ax. You could push this out and then you're looking at really the derivative of just a variable component, which would be just a in this case, but here I can push the factorial out and exclude it from the derivative procedure. What happens when I do all of that? Well, you end up getting the hyperbolic cosine series but this is just the informal way the shortcut way you would have a 3x square over 3 factorial here you'd have a 5x to the 4 over 5 factorial and then on and on you'll have 7x to the 6 over 7 factorial you'd have to simplify this when you simplify this you'll have 3x square over 3 times 2 factorial here you'll have 5x to the 4 divided by 5 times 4 factorial the remaining numbers as you know 7x to the 6 divided by 7 times 6 factorial these will cancel out what you end up seeing is you have 1 plus x square over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial. The even numbers retain only the even items with regards to the exponents and the factorials. And now you can see exactly what it would be and you can extrapolate the rest. That right there is a series for the hyperbolic cosine but we are using a shortcut here. Derivative of this, derivative of this and you develop it. Let's show you the formalized way. We will use a Maclaurin series route where we are centering everything around zero and that would be the way to do it. The route to employ and you know the derivatives are easy. The zero order derivative of this is basically just this same function but you're centering everything around zero because we're looking at the Maclaurin series route for this function. The first order would now be the hyperbolic sign zero coming in. Remember the derivatives, the higher order derivatives for these are easy. They just keep shuffling back and forth and here you'd have this. I won't even bother doing any more because I know this is a 1, that's a 0, and that's a 1, then the next one is a 0, and then this one is 1. This is my n value here for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'll bring all of that into play. That way is just like a shortcut over there. You can just breeze through that part. Develop your series from 0 up to 4. You'd have the 0 order coming in and starting it out. It would be a 1, x to the power of 0 over 0 factorial plus this we're right here now you'd have a zero x to the one over one factorial we're over here then you'd have a one x square over two factorial then you'd come right over here and then here you'd have a zero x cube over three factorial plus one x to the four over four factorial you clean it out remember this is developing the hyperbolic cosine series the standard series using the Maclaurin way of doing it you would have here d zeroing out, you would have a 1 plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial and you extrapolate the rest. And that's exactly what it is right over here, on and on. So the series has been developed. What would be the power series for this? Well, you are, you'd have to figure this one out. What are you looking at over here with regards to this one? Well, it's difficult to judge unless you make everything look consistent and I can make 1 look consistent by bringing in x to the power 0 over 0 factorial because this right here is equal to 1. I'll remove this x to the 0 over 0 factorial. But remember, the hyperbolic cosine starts with the 1, but this is equivalent to 1. I'm making it all consistent so I can develop that rule because consistency helps the development of a rule. These are not odd numbers, so you definitely would not use 2n plus 1, but they're even numbers, you'd use 2n. Everything here is even, so that simplifies it. Your power series would be this. It would be from n equals 0 up to infinity, because we have 0. We're looking at only the even numbers. You will have x to the power of 2n 
divided by 2n factorial. That would be your power series rule. And you could confirm it. When n is equal to 0, you'll have x to the power 0 over 0 factorial, which would match that. When n is equal to 1, you'd have x to the power of 2 divided by 2 factorial, which matches that. When n is equal to 2, you'll have x to the power of 4 divided by 4 factorial. And lastly, when n is equal to 3, you'll have x to the power of 6 and 6 factorial. Here's my n equals 0. Here's my n is equal to 1, 2, and 3. We're good. This series is good. The power series rule for hyperbolic cosine is good. You don't need to see any of this because now we will look at this part, the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence. Just remember, this is your series. It's exactly like the hyperbolic sign. Everything is positive except all the items are shifted by one item down in terms of their numerical value. Instead of 1s and 3s and 5s, you're seeing 1 less. 0, 2, 4, and 6, and onwards. You know how we have to evaluate this. You have to evaluate this using the ratio test. You have in absolute value your a n plus 1 term, and you have in absolute value your a n term. This right here is my a n term. Everything you see here with regards to the rule. I'll just keep that as is. x to the power of 2 n divided by 2 n factorial. My a n plus 1 term will be the n plus 1 items coming in places of n. You'll have x to the power of 2 n plus 2. Because n plus 1 times 2 is 2 n plus 2. Here you'll have 2 and you'll have n plus 1 factorial. You have to open this up. You'll have x to the 2 n plus 2 divided by 2 n plus 2 factorial multiplied by the reciprocal of this 2 n factorial divided by x to the power of 2 n. All of this is an absolute value. We have to work on that by separating things out algebraically. I have x to the power of 2 n times x squared, my laws of exponents. Here I have 2 n factorial. I keep it as is. Here I have x to the 2 n. Let's work over here. How can we work on this? Well, we start opening it up in terms of factorial. The first item is 2 n plus 2. Then the next item is less 1. Remember, you always consecutively multiply, but you decrease by 1. This would be 2 n plus 1. And then the next item would be decreased of this by 1. It would be a 2 n and onwards. The onwards part helps you out because you're looking at this which cancels out with that. You're looking at that which cancels out with that. What are we looking at now with regards to a limit? Limit as n approaches infinity. I'm looking at an x square and then I'm looking at all of this. 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1. I can keep everything in absolute value. Bring out the x square. x square limit n approaching infinity is equal to 1 over 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1. All of this is technically meaningless in the grand scheme because as n approaches infinity, these are really equivalent to 1 over infinity, which is equal to 0. All of this equals to 0. That 0 multiplies with this. When you multiply it with that, everything zeroes out. You're looking here at a 0. What does that tell you? Any value here would give you convergence because the limit is zeroing out very well your radius of convergence is going to be infinity. Your interval of convergence is any value of x will give you convergence. x is less than infinity, x is greater than minus infinity, or minus infinity up to infinity. A good case here, the hyperbolic cosine in terms of its power series develops infinite convergence and it has an interval such that any value within this entire domain will give you a convergent value. This right here is a very convergent function. And that brings us to the end of the video. You have the power series rule. This can give you the standard series as you saw the even numbers are popping up. You have this, you have that, and we have now the end of this video. Thank you, have a good day.